Tired of ripping your TV season discs for your Plex Media Library only to find that every disc only has one or two video files on them for all of the episodes for the disc, which Plex won't really read? I have a fix. It's fast, it's easy, it's free, this sounds like a commercial, it's, well, it's technically a sponsored Plex video, but this tool is not what I'm doing a commercial for. I have a really cool solution. I've been helping someone in our Discord server over at epostvox.com slash Discord rip his old DVD discs of TV seasons and was running into an issue where he was trying to use a video editor to split up the files into individual episodes, costing a lot of the quality and taking up a lot of time. I have an easy fix, and it's really cool, and I'm going to show you in today's video. Okay, as always, this is a monthly educational video series sponsored by Plex, where I show you a bunch of different things for managing your Plex media library. As mentioned, we're going to be tackling what I have here, which I've ripped the first disc of my Dragon Ball GT collection. And for the entire disc, there are multiple episodes crammed into two different files that are over two hours long each. And Plex will not read this as individual episodes. It will think that this is just a two hour, two and a half hour long, actually almost three hour long episode one. And this is a two hour long episode two. So they need split up. Now these are ripped with Make MKV, which puts in all the audio tracks you select, all the video tracks you select, and even marks the actual DVD chapter markers. Which means if you play it in a media player like VLC or Media Player Classic, which I have here, you can actually see when different chapters start. Which usually are the halfway point transitions of the episodes, like here, and then the split of each episode. So for example, at 2250, Actually, it's over here at, at about 2408, it moves on to the second episode. So there is a little bit of tedium where you have to find which episode is which, but there is this free tool called MKV Tool Nix, which is a tool used to manage these MKV files. Because MKV isn't like an MP4 or AVI or anything. It's not an editing file, it's an archive container where you can put virtually any codec combination or files in there and then you can mess with it. And as long as you're going from MKV to MKV, it's pretty much just a file copy. So go to the download link in the description below. This is, of course, safe and whatever. MKVToolNix.download. And then you can click on your operating system. For me, it's Windows. I went ahead. You can go to FossHub. I went ahead and got the portable in download instead of the installer because I don't like installing a bunch of junk on my system. And then I extracted it using 7-Zip. And I have it here. So you're going to want to launch mkvtoolnixgui.exe. And now we have the main interface for the software. So first, you need to import your input files. You can see the input files are blank. So we have, we're going to start with just this first file here, which is title 00.mkv. I'm going to drag it into the software. It knows where it's at. It knows what it is. And it even knows the container and the final size, which is 7.3-ish gigabytes. We're going to click on it. Now you can actually choose when this is happening, what all you actually want copied into your new split. So for example, if you rip it with all of the language tracks and you no longer want like the Japanese audio or the uh, surround sound audio or the subtitles, you can actually uncheck those. So when it splits the files, it doesn't copy those to the new file. And then down here, you set where the split up files will go. By default, it will place the new splits with a parentheses one or two or three or whatever in the same location as your source file, but you can tell it to go somewhere else. I'm going to leave all of the source tracks there because I like keeping them all in the file and Plex will let you select between the different audio tracks. Now, if you select the different tracks, you can actually edit what the track names are and what the language flags are for them. So for example, if it doesn't detect the correct language, you can actually adjust this so that it shows up correctly in Plex because this is just metadata. This is what is going to show up in Plex when you have the different audio tracks. So this one's going to be Japanese, this one's going to be English. So you can kind of name them as you wish and change the language to make it easier for you to manage in Plex if desired. I'm, I'm going to leave most of this by default and we're going to go ahead and go to the output tab. Under split mode, we want to go to after specific timestamps. That's how we're going to split the file. You don't want to leave it on do not split because we are splitting it. I mean, you can use this tool for a lot of different management of your MKV files. For this specific purpose, we're splitting files at specific time codes. And then you put the time codes in here separated by commas, as in the example down there. One hour is 010000 with colons, comma, 01300 as minutes. And you want to keep it kind of in that format that's the easiest to work with. 
Now, what's really cool with Media Player Classic, and VLC might have this feature as well, if I go to Navigate and then Chapters, it actually has time codes for the different chapters. So you can save yourself the time of trying to navigate on the seek bar. So for example, I know that episodes two, episode 2 starts on Chapter 6. If I click Chapter 6, we get the intro for Episode 2. So I know I need to split it starting at 2408. So I'm going to go ahead and timestamps put... 0, 0, colon, 24, colon, 08, and then a comma, because we're going to want the next one. If I tell it right then, it'll, it will make two files. It will make from the start of the video up to 24 minutes and 0 and 8 seconds, and then all of the rest of the video will be one file, or we input the different timestamps. So that's chapter 6. That's one episode. If we go to chapter 8, that looks like it's the end of the episode. So if we go to chapter 11, that's the start of episode 3, it looks like. So then that is 48.16. Comma. Okay. Then we will go to the next chapter. Chapter 16. One hour. 12 minutes. 24 seconds. So I'm going to do this for all of the rest of the episodes. So it looks like every five chapters is a new episode on this. All right, and I've gotten to the start of the last episode in the series, so if I go to this last chapter, that's just the end of the disc entirely. So we have all of the time codes input here, and it's a little tedious, but I don't, honest, I've never found any other way to do it automatically since DVDs don't, DVDs like this don't actually flag when the different episodes are made. So I'll close the file. We've now got this set up. You can go ahead and change the file output name or what have you. I'm going to leave it at it as is for now, and then you hit start multiplexing. You can actually queue all this up. So if you have a lot of episodes, you can just add it to a queue, do every single, you know, if you ripped like the entire season, you can add each file one at a time, add them to the queue and then tell it to go all at once. But we're going to go ahead and hit start multiplexing. You can see it has the job queue down here. Give it a couple minutes to do its thing. It doesn't require a whole lot of processing power and you can see it's making the new episodes here yeah we're not it's not even showing up as a blip of like overall processor usage for me because it's literally just doing a file copy out of the main file into the individual files of the new one and we're done zero warning zero errors that took like two minutes and now we have all of these individual files split up per episode instead of being all in one giant file so all of the episodes, and it still maintains the original chapters for each episode as well. They're all there. And so now you can label this Dragon Ball GT. Actually, now you can use what I showed before, FileBot, which is apparently up on, I believe, SourceForge or GitHub, still available for free, by the way. A lot of people have mentioned that in my last video about FileBot. But now I can drag all of these episodes into FileBot, make sure it's in the right order, and then we will look up the show. Dragon Ball GT is the show. I'm going to hit select. Episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That should be correct. And then we tell it to rename. And wham! Now we have Plex Friendly Files. Seven episodes here from that single episode rip. Which I think is pretty cool. Hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, hit the like button. Subscribe for more awesome tech education. Go check out my Plex affiliate links in the description down below where you can get Plex for yourself either for free or buy a Plex Pass or give a Plex Pass to a friend or family member. Links to that will be in the description below. I'm Vox, as always, and I'll see you in the next one.